Hi, this is Jack Downs with your Snow Day edition of Audio Video Production Journalism PR 240. Um, and this is going to be a, a relatively brief session. I'm going to do a little lecture, going to give you some information, and you do have homework, which is due on Monday. Um, and some things will be delayed also. Um, and I did warn you ahead of time that if we have a snow day on one of my class days, I will be sending you a video lesson because we'll continue to cover the material. Yes, I know that um, classes are canceled, but it doesn't mean I can't give you more material and still have a homework assigned as is listed in the, in the schedule. Um, so you could do this today, do it over the weekend, but stuff is due by Monday and there's stuff that's going to be appearing on the quiz. Quiz? I said quiz. When is the quiz? Well, let's take a look at the schedule and see what's going on. Today is Friday. It is a snow day, yes. There's a topic that says, what is sound? That's the topic I'm going to be going over. I asked you, some things are due today. I asked you to do the reading that was given out in class, Podcast Ch Solutions Chapter 1. You'll notice right here, I have something called reading guidance for Podcast Solutions Chapter 1. This is all in the schedule, which of course you can access. What does that mean? Some people have wondered whether they have to like answer these questions and send them in to me. No. This is what I'm suggesting is the... The, the things from the reading that I might ask you about in the quiz, some things to keep in mind when you do the reading. So there you go. That's what's going on there. Let's do next class. Audacity manual exercise. I'll tell you about that later on in this little session. Must have flash drive, must be labeled. Don't worry about this, okay? I'll give you the labels next class. We'll talk about the flash drives and how I want you to format them and so on. We'll do that next time. But you do should bring your flash drives to class. Quiz is coming Wednesday on audio video definitions, what is sound presentation, and the reading. Okay, so the reading would be this podcast solutions chapter one. Um, the audio video definitions were those simple definitions we just went over uh, last class. Okay, and then what is sound presentation is the meat of it, and it's what I'm doing right now. So this stuff I'm doing today is important for the quiz. And the reading, as I said, yes, it's the reading that we, are, we just talked about up here. There is other reading, it says, do, do next class is journalism, next chapter seven, but I'm going to delay this. This reading is delayed. We'll see. There are some questions here, which I may be giving you some information about um, if they're going to be on the quiz, but don't worry about that reading right now. That's delayed. So you really have one thing, do next class, audacity manual exercise. The reading has been delayed, but important information right here, you should take some notes as we move towards the first quiz. And first quiz is mentioned, again, we're not doing it on Monday, it's something else. It is important to bring your file, your, your drive for this exercise we're doing in class. And then on Wednesday is a quiz, and I'm going to be giving you some material. We're gonna be starting then, so make sure to bring your headphones. You're gonna be using them in class, probably the next couple of classes. Also, it's gonna be useful to you potentially to make sure you get your copy of Audacity on your computer. Um, there's information on the front of the Moodle page about that, or just search Audacity and download it. Um, or potentially get to a, a, a get to a lab computer over the weekend and, and play with Audacity. Any time you spend with Audacity now will be important, as you'll see from the manual, Audacity manual exercise I'll be giving you. So let's go ahead and start with the presentation. Presentation is about what is sound. So we're gonna start with some basics, but it gets technical pretty fast. So sound is simply vibrations transmitted through a medium, usually air, become sound when it's detected by a microphone or a listener. So vibrations, that's energy transmitted through something like air, and it becomes sound when we hear it, a microphone or a listener. So the age old question, if a tree falls in the forest and no one is there to hear it, does it make a sound? This answers that age-old question for you. Um, theoretically, what this definition is not sound. However, there's uh, there are listeners there. There's a squirrel there. They heard it, so it's sound. It becomes sound if anything anything interprets it. That's what we're saying. So vibrations. That's energy. Um, what's next? Noise is simply unwanted sound. So we have sound, and we have part of sound is noise. The noise, the sound we don't want is noise. All right, and then there's something called wavelength. Before I tell you about wavelength, let me tell you, let me show you a little um, example of what I mean by vibrations. How do the vibrations coming out of your mouth become 
sound become waves is the, is the question. This energy coming out of your mouth or out of an instrument or out of whatever. Okay. This uh, website is called uh, Physics Classroom. And I'm particularly focusing on this idea down here with this tuning fork and these little, little um, graphics. And I'll show you another example too in a moment. Let me make that bigger. Okay. So take a look at the, the, the tuning fork. You know when you hit a tuning fork, it makes a hum, a single tone. Is that like a single thing that just makes an arrow into your ear? No, it's not. It's a vibration. It's a vibration. And that vibration causes compressions compressions and then we say rarefactions but but actually we really think about it. compressions go on and off on and off on and off it's that energy it's not a single piece of energy it's like a wave of energy so there's the compressions that are created think of them as density in like the air or if the sound was going through water or something else if there's no medium for it to go through if it was in a vacuum there would be no sound but we have air, which is the most common medium to go through. So that's what's happening there. Another way to look at it is in this, no, that's the wrong one. This one, think about the sound coming out in these waves and that these, these, are the vari these are variations in air pressure that correspond to a wave, right? When we, when we draw it, we draw it in a wave Energy goes up, energy comes down, energy goes up, energy comes down, energy goes up. And that is the kind of changes in energy that hit our ears, our microphone, and, our, and create what we interpret as sound. Um, and I'll go on a little further and say we could, someplace in here is a sound wave simulator. Here it is. Okay. Sound wave simulator. Come on, sound wave simulator. Here it goes. I'm going to show the, the sound like this, and I'm going to make it go in fast motion. So see this, this compression and rarefication, the compression is going on and off, on and off, on and off. And that's the energy going through this air, these particles. And we interpret that as a changing energy up and down, up and down. And that energy is this wave-like moving thing. So when we draw a wave, we're, we're imagining it in motion, actually. It looks kind of like this. So I hope that helps a little bit. All right, so that's a wave. Okay, good. And let me get rid of that. Um, and if we go back to here, to sound waves, if we have a wave, if we draw a wave like this, if we draw a wave like this, all right, then we can have a wave length. So this is the, the wavelength is the distance between any two points in a wave and the equivalent point in the next phase. And we can go back to the presentation and see this. This is between any two points on a wave and the equivalent point on the next wave. Any point on one wave and the equivalent point on the next wave, next surge of the wave. Think about it that way. Uh, so that is wavelength, which was something you need to know. So why do we care about wavelength? Well, we'll get to it in a minute. It does affect one of the major parts of sound, what, which is, uh, the, the both the amplitude and the pitch the loudness and the pitch okay amplitude is the strength or power of a wave a wave of a wave signal the height of the wave when viewed as a, on a graph corresponds to volume in our perception of the wave so let me try to draw you something <laughs> we'll see about this so we have a little graph here right and uh, i'm not too good with these drawing tools let's see what happens and down here is going to be time. Okay, it's in red for some reason. Okay, and up here is going to be so time is this axis over here, and over here is amplitude, which is this axis up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw now a wave. So the energy goes up, and the energy comes down, and the energy goes up, and the energy comes down. So this, the height of this wave is the amount of energy in it. So a big wave like this could be loud, and a little wave like this would be soft. So the height of the, a, of the wave is the amount of energy that's represented. It's the amount of amplitude, therefore, which means it's the amount of volume. Amplitude is how we write it on the chart, and our perception of that 
is volume. So I'm going to get, um, I'm going to, and then what about wavelength? Well, we tend to talk about wavelength, I'll change the color, as being from the peak, one peak to the next peak. But honestly, it's the same distance from one trough to the next trough, or from one midpoint to the next midpoint. This distance is wavelength, okay? That distance is wavelength. So we have the amplitude of the wave and the wavelength of the wave. So let us do something else here then. Okay, amplitude is our measure of, of loudness, okay? And frequency. Frequency is the number of cycles, number of times the wavelength occurs in one second. We call this cycles per second. It corresponds to pitch, and it's our perception of frequency. In other words, this is why the wavelength is important, because the shorter the wavelength, the more of them there are. And the longer the wavelength, the fewer than there are, okay? So I'll go back to my chart here. So this wavelength, this wave as it con would continue along, would have a certain uh, frequency, a certain pitch. But a wave that was much faster, which has shorter wavelengths, right? There's a lot more of them in a, in a certain amount of time. It would be higher, higher pitch. Okay, higher pitch. But on the other hand, a wave that was much slower, it was very slow, so really long wavelength, that would be a much lower pitch. So frequency, our perception of it is pitch. Amplitude, our perception of it is loudness. So you need to know those things. So how so that's so so if amplitude is loudness and our our perception of it is is volume, how is that measured? It's measured in a unit called decibels. We write it as usually as lowercase d capital B decibels. So it's a kind of a relative um, unit. It's not it's semi scientific, but it's kind of like based on perception. So the normal threshold of hearing is zero. So if you if you can't hear it it's at zero or below zero right the sound which is a little weird because of course um that's the normal threshold of hearing but people individuals have much different thresholds of hearing depending on how good your hearing is but it's just sort of a perception based uh, measure and then 30 decibels example would be like a whisper and then 50 to 65 would be normal conversation and 85 to 90 would be a lawnmower and then more than 90 prolonged exposure causes damage and more than 125 um, exposure at all can cause pain. So we really have to be careful with how much, de I mean, decibels, which means how much volume, which means how much amplitude, which is the amount of energy, which we expose our ears to or can cause damage. And <clears throat> there's a website I wanted to show you about that called, let's do this one. So this is not exactly true, but we can try to, let's see if it's going to work. That sounds off. That sounds on. Sometimes this is weird. Sometimes it'll work for me, sometimes it won't. There it goes. So whispering about 30 decibels, but a motorcycle. Wow, it's getting loud. And then fireworks. Okay, you know, the, there's many examples. You can go places, and, and, and by the way, the list of websites that I'm showing you is at the end of this presentation if you want to look at them yourselves. But you can go to a lot of places and find um, the uh, this kind of a, of a sample of examples of sounds. And it all really depends on also on how much you have your the volume on your computer turned up and stuff like that. But it does get you the idea that certain things above this area, this lawnmower kind of area, all of a sudden we're getting into a danger area. That's when it becomes red over here. But also it's how, how much time you spend with the sound makes a difference too. And there is physical damage that happens inside your ear um, when, from this sort of stuff. And you can see the healthy ear fibers and the damaged ear fibers. The fibers actually become damaged and they cannot ever be fixed. You end up with a hearing aid in the end. Okay, 
So frequency pitch is measured in cycles or wavelengths per second. So we can we use a unit called Hertz, which you will hear about lots of places. It's kind of like an all-purpose unit. It just means the number of something per second, the number of anything per second. We're using it here in sound. We use it in other ways too, and it's used in lots of different fields. We could so you say you could say one CPS, which is one cycle per second, one wavelength per second, or you could say that's equals to one hertz. We often because we actually have a lot of a lot of hertz. We have a lot of cycles per second in, in sound. We often use kilohertz, which is a thousand cycles per second. The faster the sound source vibrates, the higher the frequency, therefore the higher the pitch. Frequency range. The range of human hearing is about from 20 hertz, which is very low, to 20,000 hertz, which is very high. Uh, we lose the ability to hear this range as we age, especially in the high end. Human voice range is much smaller than this. We only, we only speak generally from 80 hertz to 1.1 hertz. But the average speaking frequency is even more restricted. The normal conversation, it's a little difference between male and female voices or between, if you want to say generally, generally lower and generally higher voices. But you see the range is pretty small considering the range we can hear. Um, so, but we generally find the things between about 85 and 250 to be more pleasant to hear. That's our normal speaking and hearing, or speaking conversation kind of range. Um, so, uh, let me just tell you a little bit, about, a little bit about that. So, we could go to an online tone generator if you want to know more about this. So, this is the number of hertz that are being displayed. So, 440 hertz is what it's at right now. <laughs> Eighty hertz, and I can go way higher, but it would start to break my computer probably and make it sound really weird. So you can go to online tone generator, you can try different hertz in here. Of course, different hertz does does apply to different um, musical notes, which is not like that's an F, I guess. I don't know. So you can also apply to different musical notes. Stop. That's this is an online tone generator, so you get the idea how different hertz affects. Different amount, a different amount of frequency. Um, so we are on the low end in our in our listening and hearing in general. Um, likewise, in amplitude, we tend to only use a small amount in our speaking, a small amount of amplitude between a whisper and, and normal speech, which is very small considering how much amplitude is potentially out there, right? All right. So what else? Um, sample. Okay. Um, so, um, again, so I already showed you, I already drew from you the waveform, and I showed you um, how our, the, the, the compression and the energy in our in sounds, which we could imagine as this compressions in air or medium, turns in, we, we represent it as waves, we draw it as waves. So, here's a question. Uh, what, how does that thing in nature become like a digital wave that we edit in our in our audio editing program. Well, we have to take little pictures of that wave at certain moments. We call this how many pictures we take. We call these pictures samples. We take little samples. That's what a digital recorder does. It takes little samples. Let's go back to my drawing and I'm going to do some undoing here. Let's just go back to my first wave here. My first wave, ready? So here's this wave, which is a sound in nature, let's say. It would be a very simple sound. And let me choose a different color. We'll choose this blue and a different size, maybe. Okay, sure, something like that. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, now imagine that I have a digital recorder. What's it going to do? It's going to say, oh, I'm going to take a sample. Oh, I'm going to take another sample. Oh, I'm going to take another sample. In time, it's going to take samples every short time it's going to take another sample it's going to go sample 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 so it doesn't take the entire wave it just takes these moments in time and a lot a lot a lot a lot of them okay that is the these are samples and of course how many samples are taken determines the sample rate the rate at which samples are captured or played back we can look at it both in the way rate they're captured and the way they're played back this is measured in hertz Again, it's something per second, samples per second. An audio CD has a sample rate of 44,100 hertz. So we generally say it's a 44 kilohertz or 44K. 
um, is what the, the sample rate of a CD is. Um, this is the default sample rate that Audacity uses, and we generally call this CD quality, CD sound quality, and it's a kind of a standard for general use. It's pretty good quality. That's a lot of samples a second, 44,000 samples a second. That's what is being recorded, and that's what we're looking at when we're editing a wave, is 44,000 samples a second. But one other question you have to ask yourself is, how good are each of these samples, right? How much information is inside them? That would determine quality also. The other thing that determines audio quality besides sample rate, audio recording quality, audio editing quality, is sample format. How many samples are happening per second is, is sample rate. But how good are those formats, how good are those samples is sample format, sometimes called sample size or called bit depth. Essentially, this is the number of digits, which is the amount of information in the digital representation of each sample, how good each sample is. An audio CD has a precision, has a digital sample size, bit depth, or sample format of 16 bits. That is our default. So you can record in much higher sample rates and much higher sample formats, which makes both bigger files and theoretically better quality. However, you have to ask yourself, how good is your playback anyway? And here are some of the links that were used, if you're interested in them. And you can find this, this presentation on Moodle in the, let me go take this Moodle and go back here. If you went to, that's not what I wanted to do. No, no, no. I want to go to my course. If we went to um, this area, which says presentation is a study folder, the presentation is a study, what is sound is right there. By the way, there's our intro to audio definitions, which are also in the first quiz. So you want to go through this again, look at it more, more slowly, take down some more notes. There's a PDF version of this presentation right there. Okay, so that's the presentation. Now, what I'd like to do is I want to show you what that sound wave looks like in our editor and how it really is a wave. Although... The, the, our examples, my drawing, my messy drawing, and the examples that we saw on the websites were extremely clean and simple, which is like an extremely simple tone. Real sound is more complicated than that. So I'm just going to take a pause here, and I'll get right back to that. Okay, here I am with Audacity open. So um, you should download Audacity to your computer. Um, it may be, it'll be definitely be a different version of your, downloading your own Audacity. It'll be three something probably. However, this is the version which is similar to what's in the classrooms and labs. So if you're there in a classroom or lab, great. This is similar to what you'll see. Uh, most of the functions will be pretty much the same. Yes, we're going to have some issues with people having different versions. So maybe some commands will be called something slightly different or be in slightly different places. Screens might look a little bit different, but I'm sure we'll get through it. Audacity is extremely commonly, uh, very popular, commonly used, very popular uh, audio editing software, both because it's free. A lot of people are making their own podcasts or using Audacity. Yes, there are lots of other programs out there, um, but the basic skills are very similar and audacity can do most everything that you need um, and I think if you learn audacity you, it's only a little bit of a step up to learn like to move on to like audition which is Adobe's um, audio editing program it may look cooler but really it works about the same when you start up audacity you get this help how to get help thing which includes a link to the manual and so on but don't worry we can get to it another time another places inside the program too so you pretty much just always say okay to that but that's fine that it shows up there so this is the general screen of audacity um and i'm not really giving you a tutorial on the program right now i'm going to let you do that yourself as part of the assignment but what i want to do is i want to bring in a file to talk to you about that waveform idea what file am i going to use well i'm going to go to moodle and go to a folder called resource files for assignments and there I see there's a file inside this file handling folder and then inside this next folder audacity intro voice music I'm gonna take this music edit one and do a right click this is how you download stuff from Moodle just so you know right click on it and choose save link as or in some browsers it might say something a little different but you don't want to um, just click on it and open it you just want to save it down and know where you're putting it. So save link as gives me the choice about where I put it. I'm just going to put mine right in downloads. So it'll go right there. And I'm going to do the same with the voice edit. Save link as. I'm just going to save that there too. Just to have them. Just to show you. Uh, we'll look at at least one of them. Let me bring up my program again. So I'm going to go file import audio. And then I'm going to have to navigate to go find that. Which is in my... Actually... 
wrong place downloads and it's the music that it open up first and it's going to take a moment to bring it in and there it is wow that looks weird that doesn't look like the wave i was showing you does it um well let me first play it so you can hear it so I'll hit the play button so it's music okay good but where is the wave i see all this fuzzy stuff typically when we're doing detailed editing we zoom in on things okay right and the best way to zoom in on things in audacity is to select the area you're interested in this little bit i'll select you see up here is this timeline is in seconds you see this whole thing is about two and not quite 245 two uh minutes and 45 seconds so i've just got a, a couple of seconds in here and i will zoom in on the selection and these tools here which is fit selection to width i could just be using the the the, the plus zoom in and zoom out and there's keyboard shortcuts for this too um which you see control one is zoom in control three is zoom out there's a shortcut for this too but i just click on the button okay i've zoomed in so we have that's like little fractions of a second well that's a second from 11 to 12 is a second right um so i've got a couple of seconds here it's still pretty fuzzy but it looks a little bit clearer now but let me just take like half a second something like that i'm going to zoom into that again now if it's selection in oh yeah i can start to see what's starting to look like a wave it's not a smooth wave it has a lot of character as it sound some places are bigger than others it's a little bit chunky i can zoom in even more so just into a tiny fraction of a second and all of a sudden i can see yeah there is a waveform underneath here and there's places where it goes up where it goes down there's a lot more interesting stuff happening to it but underneath it all there is still a waveform here um, the waveform of music might look different than the waveform of voice i'll let you experiment with that yourself if you like i can go back to the entire look at the entire thing um, I, as I said, I could just put my cursor someplace and I could just go zooming in, uh, which would do be that control, yeah, control one, control three zooms out, um, and so on. Uh, so that's what the, um, how we, a way, a real waveform that was collected in the wild looks when it gets into your digital program, our editing program, and your first look at our, perhaps your first look at our editing program. Um, so now let's move on to the homework and let me show you where you can find that. I will have attached a copy of this PDF of the homework to your, to the email message. You can also go find it, any of these handouts to, uh, at, in a folder, class assignments and handouts. Audacity manual exercise is what is due on, uh, Monday. And this is what it looks like. And what does it say? Let me make it a little bit bigger. Do this reading online. You have three choices. You can use Audacity in a computer lab or classroom. Okay, right? So you could come, you could do it in our lab and ward or the classroom and ward, which I believe the building is open today. You could come in here. So it's not that bad at all now. And um, you could use that. Or you could use the, the main computer lab. Or you could install on your own computer. Or honestly, you could actually just use a web browser and just look through the manual that way. Yeah, that's probably not the best way, but. Anyway, I like the idea of you going to uh, getting your own copy or, or going to a lab where it's installed and using it there. But to view the same version that we use in the classroom, the version of the assignment is built for, I strongly suggest you complete using this Audacity in a computer lab or in the classroom. It'll be more like the real one I'm using and you'll use in the classroom. Answer the questions below. Your answers should be submitted on Moodle before class. Um, actually, um, yep, on Moodle before class. Submit a Word doc or a PDF. Please no share Google Docs. If you want to use these live links here, um, download the PDF version of the assignment from Moodle. So you may want to download and install your own program. So you would go to Audacity Team, which is here, and you would go to Download, and then you'd use Windows, Mac, or Linux, I suppose, and you would download its 3.1.3. Yes, you could do that. Um, that's one thing you could do. Okay, good and then get your own copy whether you go to a lab to do this assignment or not okay and what else uh that's not what i wanted do, 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 do. 
Oops, I guess I have to go back. I guess I had the document still. Here it is. Yeah, I should have brought a new tab there. Um, so you could download your own copy. You could go to in, 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 Word 114, 115, or, the, or some other or college lab and look at Audacity there. Or you could just go to the manual online. And this time I'll use a new tab for this. And now this is the manual for the new comp, new version. But you can do this exercise pretty well through this manual here, which is a little different from the manual you'll find is a manual in the program. Let me bring the program up. So if you had the program up, if you'd use that splash screen, you saw there was a link to the manual there, or you go to help and go to manual. And it opens up a manual in your browser, but now it's the manual for this exact version. Okay, so the manual is, either way, it's not a physical manual, it's, a, it's an online manual. Okay, good, so here's the manual. Either you, found, either you just looked at the manual on the website, or you had your own version and you went to help manual or use that splash screen to look at the manual, or you went to a classroom or lab and used that splash screen or did the help manual. Remember, the saying is help manual get you to the manual. Okay, one way or another, you get to a manual, hopefully something like the two version, but if it's a three version, you can still do it, it's okay. Okay, so you did that, right? So what I want you to do is, however you get the manual, look down to the page to understanding audacity section i've listed the sections i want you to read below right for so i say first on the reference link on the left go to the digital audio link so under the reference area on the left go to um the the digital audio link which is right there see and then you will answer you'll look read through that area and you will be able to there you're going to answer some questions um, so I'm telling you first the areas you're going to be looking at. That area, review the following sections under Audacity, Audacity Foundations. There's certain sections. So Audacity Foundations is here. I'm using Audacity. Audacity Foundations is this area here. Audacity Foundations. Okay. And then I tell you to read the area called Editing with Audacity, in particular these sections here. These are not actual links that you're going to be able to use to get to it. Eh, maybe it is, but I'm not sure how well they would work because I may need to link to a different one. I think you're probably just going to have to go through here and find those. Editing with Audacity, you can find that stuff here. Okay. Um, and it tells you, um, you might also visit the FAQ in the reference sidebar to find some answers too. Because I want you to answer these 10 questions. These are due in class. Type response to these questions. Um, and you can expect to see some of, this inf some of this information on the first quiz, too. What is a waveform? What, um, what two factors is the quality of digital audio heavily dependent? What is clipping? What are AUP files? Can I play them on my iPod? Or whatever. iPods are pretty much a dinosaur now. You know what I mean. On your, on your device. Manual says MP3 format is lossy. What does this mean? Is the wave format lossy? What do we do with the transport toolbar? You can see they all. This is the the mock-up here of the of all our toolbars, and they are named and described here. Okay, um, and uh, so on. So those are the ten questions. I want you to answer those questions. This is the Audacity manual exercise. Um, but feel free to review other sections of the manual. I suggest that you do. You may also want to view the glossary. And why don't you take a little time and spend some time with the tutorials? There is a number of uh, of tutorials here. Editing your first audio file, the first recording. We're not going to be recording using Audacity. It's fine if you if you learn about it. It's fine with me. Mixing, multi-track, some of this stuff goes, we're not going to be doing. We're definitely going to be doing um, uh, removing vocal, vo vocal, removing isolation, um, making ringtones. Well, why not? Sure. Any of this, any of these tutorials will be useful. And you want to use, you want to get a piece of audio to use in your tutorial? Well, go to Moodle and go to uh, these folders and download one of these, some of these files so you can play with these files in the tutorials. So it's only a text question. Uh, the answers to the questions are what are due in reviewing the the manual in general. But I, I strongly encourage you to spend some time with Audacity and perhaps practice some of those tutorials or play around with it using some of these sound files that you have here to use or any sound file that you want. Um, okay, I think that's about it. Let me make sure I don't have anything else to tell you today. Okay, the last thing I want to tell you is
kind of the answer to some of the questions that are listed in the schedule. Um, so if you remember, when we looked at the schedule, which is, I'm going to have to go find it now, right? Yep, in the schedule. Um, I mentioned that you don't have to do that reading right now, but there were some questions that were listed in the journalism next chapter seven reading. What is natural sound and why do you want it? Natural sound is not the same thing as noise or background noise, background sound. Um, uh, it, there's definitely sound that come, becomes interruption, sound that becomes noise, background noise. But natural sound is the natural sound of the environment that helps to place us there, be it a, a construction site with noise happening and so on, so it sounds busy, be it a classroom with a shuffle of papers and so on, or an office. It's the, it's, the, it's the sound that's outside of the interview, but does help to place us in the, the location, helps to give it a feel of place. Should you let interview subjects know questions ahead of time? Why or why not? No, you should not. Um, you might you're going to definitely prepare them. You're going to tell them what, make sure they know what the topic is. Make sure you know what you're talking about. Make sure you, they know about the sorts of things you want to discuss, right? But the actual questions you have, you don't give them a list of questions ahead of time. You definitely want to get a real natural responses to things and not prepared rote answers that they've memorized. And also you want to be you want to be ready to ask questions you didn't expect that you're going to ask because you're listening and you're going with the flow of the conversation. What is the delayed recording interview style and why would you use it? Um, it's a really interesting technique. It takes some practice, but it's first do the interview, then do the recording. And what it does is it saves a lot of editing time. What you do is you do the interview and take notes, even though it's going to be an audio interview. Because remember, you're going to be probably reworking this later and adding your own voice and explanation and so on. So you, you do the interview, take notes, and then you have a really good idea what the content is. Then you turn the recorder on and you ask the questions to get the person to say exactly what to, to cover the content very efficiently. So you didn't record the entire, you know, 40 minutes when they were, you were just talking and all kinds of tangents, you did took notes and then you, re, you recorded just the stuff you wanted. Why should you use headphones? You should always use headphones when you're doing audio or video, um, or someone on the team should be, so you can really tell if you're getting good sound. You really, without headphones, you don't know what's really going into that recorder. First of all, to make sure it is really recording, but also um, our, perception of sound is so influenced by so many things in our environment and by our eyes too, right? That you may think, oh, we must be getting good sound. But until someone is actually listening with the headphones to what's really coming into the recording, you don't know what kind of sound you're getting. All right. Hey, well, enjoy your snow day. And uh, hopefully this lesson wasn't too onerous. And you've got some good background and stuff uh, to get, get going in audio and some basic information and some stuff that will be on the quiz.